Welcome to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers, for dog trainers, or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. So going back to this other topic, we're going to cut this and this will be its own thing. Um, so different dimensionalities in dog training, right? Um, there was many, many years that people would just blame the dog. It's the dog right? It's the dog's genetics or he's bad that he bit and right. And then now, uh, with Tyler, we talked about like when Caesar came on the scene, it was a, now it's the owner's fault. You're being this, you're being that. And, uh, so there was a lot of focus on the owner. And then what we see now in modern days is we always see, okay, yes, we see this paradigm. It's the dogs and it's the owners. And then there are these behaviors that are required from both in order to make the relationship work. Right. And exactly. so what me and Mariano have, have called this over the years is just the, the three dimensions of dog training, right? There could definitely be four or five or six or seven, right? Um, and maybe you can help enlighten us with it. Um, but but I, I guess I kind of want to just riff on this a little bit. Are there more dimensions um, that you can that you can enlighten us with? I, I think you're, you're, you're definitely talking about the big ones, mm -hmm. right? So there's the dog and their mm -hmm. genetics, their environment. Uh, and you could talk about stuff that's outside the handler. You could talk about early environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true, 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 true. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. Right. So a developmental environment is very different than the environment the dog's living in as an adult. You could talk about the handler and their issues, the owner and their issues in that sense. <laughs> their so, early development I, also. Their early development. <laughs> I, I never right. had a dog all, before. <laughs> what do they say? It all, it all goes back to childhood, right? right? right. Any good therapist and whatever the problem is now, we can trace it back and find where it it's started, true. right? Yes, and, right. And so, and I think as as trainers, we preach foundation so much, right? That that, um, I think we, we what we have to avoid is two things that are connected to these these paradigms. One is that thinking that all problems are fixable. Right. Right, they're not that we can't turn a dog into something that it isn't at a certain point, right. and to think that it's all the owner's fault either. Right, neither of those things, and so we preach so much about the early development, and I'm obsessed with it. I talk to people about it all the time, and I'm like intervene as early as possible. All these kinds of things are so important, um, just because of that. The the further you go along in that process, the more rigid everyone gets. Right. The people get the more rigid the dogs get and the harder it is to make large changes in their environment and so i mean i think those those worlds that you're talking about are all intertwined mm -hmm. and there's no blaming any one piece of it because you couldn't know anyway it's like saying how much of who you are is genetics versus environment right you right? can't know there's no there's no exact percentage the whole thing down to the point the point of what happened while you were in the womb yeah. like how much stress was your mom under right. while you were developing? That's going to affect your your the genetic outcomes. Yeah. And so, at some point, we like to go down the rabbit hole with these right. things. But I don't. I think the overarching idea is not to blame the dog, not to blame the owner, but to find the best possible solution or the right. best possible way forward through that, and accept that there will be things, especially when you get into behavior mod and stuff like that, there'll be things you're not fixing. Yeah. You, you may make them better. Mm -hmm. You may make them manageable. You know, the yeah. Manageable, manageable, where this dog can have a functional life. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that people tend to think of it as such a failure if they don't work with a given dog, yeah. right? So back to your rescue kind of analogies and things like that. People say, well, like the dog's like my kid. Like I can't get rid I wouldn't get rid of my kid. I'm like, no, no, no. The dog's like, your ex-girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> you guys were really into each other at the start and you grew apart yeah. you realized you weren't yeah. compatible and so, like what's a perfect dog for one person is not yeah. a perfect dog for somebody 100%. else and at some point we as dog trainers are moderators for this whole that. yeah i always tell people we're right. relationship counselors for dogs and they're humans oh yeah. yeah and there's a point where you're like you guys are just an awful match yeah you, you came to marry Something with me, and you guys are a terrible match, mm -hmm. and this dog will be somebody else's dream dog, mm -hmm. and you're having issues with it. And stop trying to turn it into something that it's right. not. And rooted in all that kind of thing is an acceptance of of the dog for its dogness, whatever that is for that given dog mm -hmm. too, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a point where if somebody comes and says, "Well, I don't want my dog doing this, this, and this, and this," I'm like, yeah, that's 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 the dog's that essence of yeah. this dog. That's why would would you want yeah, that? That's the right? dog's nature. 
sometimes, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can't change his nature. You can't change nature yeah. sometimes. You know what's funny is whenever I have to have a conversation like that, the, the, the way in my experience to really get people on board and, and understand and feel empathetic toward the dog as opposed to feel like their back is up because they're being attacked by me is I, I try to look at it from the dog's perspective. So it's not like, listen, you and this dog just aren't, you know, it's like you have to understand the dog would be better off with someone who does this, this, and this. Whereas you getting yourself a dog that's more like X, Y, Z, you guys would have such a fun time with all this. And that other dog would have such a fun time with all that. And and typically speaking, yep. people, they're like maternal or paternal instincts kick in. And they're like, you know what? I love this dog. I'm going to do right by the dog. If that means letting it go, that's painful, but I can accept this. Mm -hmm. That's sure. real. That's real. Got a break. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. We're that therapist. Just... Maybe have you considered divorce? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Consider divorce. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move forward. Um, so, Michael, you've had amazing insight and helped us out. What are some projects, some things that you're passionate about? Something that you want to tell our audience? Um, so, thank you. Yeah, uh, th yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I have a whole bunch of changes happening at our school. So I, I think we, we were talking about it, I think maybe before we started mm -hmm. recording uh, the coronavirus, the pause that it caused um, uh, awful, awful for lots of people. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I feel bad about that, but it gave me a big block of time to do a bunch of stuff that I've been wanting to do and just could not find the time to do. And so we're revamping a whole bunch of our programs at the school. Um, and there'll be stuff coming out about it, but most of the classes that traditionally were offered, uh, only in person mm -hmm. are will now have uh, live online Amazing. components where, where you can, um, uh, hang on. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, hold on. Okay. Hi, don't worry. Hi. Good. Hi. <laughs> Uh, my wife. Hi. Hi. So she w wants some information. She wants me to write. No, do do your thing. Like, we can cut. It. We can cut all this out. Do you remember where he was? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. What's your name, Michael Ellis's wife? Carol. Hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. <laughs> she she Look, popped. Carol, we're upside down. down. We should it. we should leave this in. I love this. Okay. Can we keep this in, Michael? I think this is hilarious. <laughs> okay. Oh, and I've got a dog joining me too. So I love it. Go, Monk. Take off, buddy. <laughs> I love that. Go. I love that. He's a real he's a real human, everybody. He's real. He's I'm, not a robot. I'm, I'm, clapping up, not a ro I'm clapping up a quick finishing sentence for the outro, Brent, so that we can mention the school and the revamp uh, one more time. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. Um, could we actually, could we just, could we take it again just from the school, yeah. school stuff? Let's just go and, all right, I'll just, I'll cue you in. Like, um, uh, all right, Michael, I really want to thank you so much for, for just giving us all this insight, but I really want to dive into... What projects and things are you really passionate about that you want to go ahead and tell our listeners about? Sure. Thank you. Um, I, 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 as we were talking about before the show started, uh, the coronavirus has caused uh, a whole lot of hardship for a lot of people. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's sensitive to that. But also the break, the three months basically that we shut down and couldn't have students on campus gave me a giant block of time to do a whole bunch of changes that I've been wanting to do for years, right? And I'm scheduled out, the school was scheduled out a year and a half to two years in advance. Wow. And so taking a big pause, meaning you have to make your schedule that far enough in advance so that people can plan. When people are traveling to the school and having to find lodging and stay there and take two and three weeks and then our long-term program four months off oh. from what they're doing, then that's a major kind of planning thing for them. So we need to be projected out far enough so that people can make those plans. And so that meant that I would schedule it. And then next thing you know, you don't have no breaks and I couldn't, there were things that I wanted to change that in the way I structured the programs in the beginning that I just never got around to. So I have gotten around to it and spent a fair amount of time over the next few months, last few months. And the big one is that almost all of our offerings will be uh, available um, remotely. Awesome. So there will be some recorded portions that people can watch ahead of it. There will be some live lectures and discussions. And then there's live dog work where you actually can work your dog and get feedback from us Amazing. and in the moment. So as if you were coming as close to being there as possible. And in some ways, actually, I'm finding 
that it has advantages mm -hmm. like the dog the one the dogs um we can make shorter blocks of time so the dogs aren't you know sitting in crates as much when mm -hmm. they're at the school and things like that. when you have large classes the dogs don't have to go out of environments where they're potentially comfortable for so some of the reactive and fearful mm -hmm. dogs they can work in an environment where they're already comfortable and then actually you know you pop in earbuds and you have good cameras and i can see everyone can see right what you're doing up That's close awesome. and so it, and we're in the process of working through it and it, it's working really well so i'm kind of very excited about the fact that um uh a lot of people that would be unable to come to the school the way the old format was we should now be able to access what we're doing that's amazing right so, what are some of like the core yeah. classes or core courses that you teach so the, i'm finishing up right now uh our obedience intensive mm -hmm. which is kind of the fundamental way we approach obedience in general. So this is the foundation of everything we do. When we talk about principles, this is the one that covers the principles mm -hmm. and the, the basics of that. And it was when I designed it, uh, originally it was two weeks, Monday through Friday mm -hmm. from end uh, five, basically mm -hmm. all day for two weeks. Um, and then for this, I extended it out to three weeks and it's basically four hour days. Mm -hmm. So it, it was run 10 to two and I'm, I, tomorrow's the last day of it. Um, and so, um, that class is super well attended in general. We usually have 15 or 20 students in that class when we run it and we re we're traditionally running it about four times a year. Cool. And so now this online version, there's really kind of no limit to how big the class can right. be because my, we use the zoom breakout rooms and I can have an instructor with and I can make just make the groups small. So uh, I don't cool. actually have to have sitting there either. So my instructors, the people that I've been training with for years could be home, right, running practicals with people. And so that actually, it's it's been kind of remarkable. Yeah. And uh, the, the student feedback on the first one, which is just winding up seems to be really good. So there'll be a lot more of that stuff. And we and then we have, uh, like, e collar class, and I have classes on motivation, and we have more advanced obedience classes, all those are getting structured into those formats. And the goal will be to ha give people options, mm -hmm. meaning there'll be uh, an option where you don't have to be there every right. day. Mm -hmm. You the lecture portions will be recorded mm -hmm. and you just drop in for the practical portions twice a week right. or whatever. And so for people that are busier, they'll be able to access the same class and somebody else who wants to do it in a concentrated period of time will be able to do it. Amazing. Now, do you guys offer a, like graduation certifications from the, Okay. Mm -hmm. And is yeah. that now available so, online as well? Yep. That is yep. huge. So, Everyone who's listening, that is huge. I you guys can yep. go online and train at Michael Ellis's school online versus having to drive to Northern California and, and live there. That is amazing. Yeah, I think that's, that's really, yeah. really awesome because it opens up the, the world. I mean, not only for the instructor, but for the students themselves, it just makes it that much more accessible for anybody who, you know, and, and it's, I mean, I'm glad of, of of all the people who are capable in the position right now to do that kind of thing, I'm really glad it's you. So yeah, definitely. Anybody listening, yeah. do this. Do, go to Michael Ellis's school. That's where you need to be. Yeah, I mean, you you're gonna learn. Okay. You're gonna learn amazing things. I mean, I, I, I and we'll, we'll be very upfront. Like, there's been a lot of people and 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 knowledge, people, you know, sources of knowledge that I've pulled from. But you know, one thing, man, me, 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 Mariano, and Tyler were all riffing on last week was just like the precise language. Yeah. Like you really say what it is, and you say how you know you say it clearly. You make it make sense to the mind, the heart, and just in general. So it's so easy to remember when you speak because you make sure it makes sense to both the mind and the heart at the same time. So. Okay. Incredibly you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Actually, I'm gonna sign up for the school. I'm gonna find out when the next class is. I'm on. The no, school. I'm gonna sign up for the school. No, I'm serious. I'm on. I'm on the site right now. I'm gonna. Sign. So yeah. sorry. Continue. Continue. <laughs> There's nothing on the site yet, so you're gonna be. Oh, on the end of it. oh <laughs> never mind. Cool. Schedule schedule in process. Cool. Uh, <laughs> right now, we're just finding the content. The schedule will be up probably over the next. I got it. Months. I'm gonna keep my eyes open. <laughs> Sucker. Dude, I'm gonna sign up first.